historical, ge I mean, physical geology students. I hope you're having a good week. It's a beautiful day out today. Um, I'm going to finish off chapter six today. And this will be the second lecture for your Wednesday class, which is tomorrow, June the 17th. I'm going to put up one more video after this one to get you started on chapter 5. But let's take a look at these metamorphic rocks again until we get them down pat. Because I know if you think about these metamorphic rocks, the, the characteristics they have, you'll be able to identify them. Remember when you look pick up a meta, meta, when you pick up a metamorphic rock, you want to it's changed from something. And what it used to be is called the parent rock. So every metamorphic rock, you need to know who the parent was. And you can do that by using the chart right here from your textbook. You should also know that every metamorphic rock is, has one of two textures, foliated or non-foliated. Let's take a look at foliation a little bit more. Here you can see a gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S. Some people call it a layer cake rock, and there's a picture of the gneiss, a schematic drawing right over here. And they have drinking straws here to show you that these minerals are aligned just like these straws are in the same direction. A gneiss is a good example of a foliated metamorphic rock. It's important to note that gneiss is... Um, one of your most common metamorphic rocks and it's always all foliated rocks involve pressure so you know pressure was involved increased pressure was involved to make any foliated metamorphic rock such as Nice. here you can see a parent rock with horn blend crystals in it it's one of the minerals you looked at in minerals lab and they're all lined up in all sorts of different directions but after the pressure is added, they all line up to make foliation. Pressure makes foliation. Slate, another metamorphic rock. There's a slate mine in Germany. Slate is used to make floor tile. It comes in many different colors. So you can't just take a photograph uh, and, and know what slate is. You just can't Google it. You have to know what slate looks like regardless of what color it is. But it's definitely got that foliation. It's used to make um, pool tables and slate tile. Another foliated metamorphic rock is called phyllite. P-H-Y-L-L-I-T-E. And it, this one here it has got a little curve to the foliation. And there's all kinds of looks for these rocks. So you uh, you can't just look at five or six photographs and know what phyllite looks like. you got to look for that curvy foliation. And sometimes it has a silky look to it. Sort of a glossy look to it. But not real strong. Weak. Schist, S-C-H-I-S-T, contains mica that's lined up to make foliation. And uh, some people call it the Christmas glitter rock because it kind of looks like Christmas glitter. And it could have muscovite or biotite or chloride or any mica. Those are minerals with one direction, one direction of cleavage that form flat planes. You could break them with your fingers. Here's garnet schist. And you can see little garnets, 12-sided crystals inside of that schist. Here's a gneiss. All the rocks I just showed you are foliated. Here's a special type of foliated metamorphic rock called migmatite, M-I-G-M-A-T-I-T-E. And that migmatite is when the layers form curves in it like this. Migmatites are only formed under very, very high pressures and temperatures. And they're all, they almost melt, so they're almost an igneous rock, but they're not. because they, they, they started to flow a little bit, but they didn't become an igneous rock. That's called a migmatide. Other metamorphic rock you need to know is 
um, definitely want to know marble. Marble is parent is limestone. Limestone has calcite in it, and it fizzes. And when limestone is exposed to higher pressures and temperatures, it's going to make marble. It, and marble will fizz with acid. So test it when you get your metamorphic rocks tomorrow to see does it fizz. Remember, marble never has foliation. It's not foliated. Quartzite, on the other hand, can be easily confused with marble. Um, marble, by the way, comes in different colors, so don't use color. You, you can't just look at photographs and figure out if it's marble or not. you got to do the acid test. Quartzite, on the other hand, uh, its parent is quartz sandstone. And uh, when quartz sandstone is exposed to higher pressures and temperatures, it changes in the quartzite. It has a sugary look to it. A sugary look to it. It can come in a variety of different colors. But if you get a non-foliated metamorphic rock with a sugary look to it, and you think it might be quartzite, it, this is the test you should do. Rub it against a piece of glass. If it scratches the glass, it's quartzite. Because quartz will scratch glass. And it's, quartz is a hardness of higher than five and a half. Hornfells, we talked about it already. It's a very dull looking rock. And you could and um, Google is some images. I showed that to you before. Okay, so those are your main metamorphic rocks. Next thing we want to talk about is metamorphic grade. What in God's name is metamorphic grade? Well, if you think about it, if a rock changes, it could change a little bit or it could change a lot. And it's going to change a lot if the pressures and temperatures are higher. It's just going to, if you just notch up those pressures and temperatures a little bit, then it's going to be a lower metamorphic grade. But if you dial up the pressures and temperatures to, to really high, close to melting, but you can't melt it or it become, makes an igneous rock. But higher pressures and higher temperatures are going to make higher metamorphic grade. Um, let me show you a picture that might help you with a metamorphic grade. Okay. So let's take a look at metamorphic grade for a moment here. Here's a nice picture. Showing you metamorphic grade and the minerals that are found in with different metamorphic grades. So here's some different metamorphic rocks. These are all foliated. Let's say the parent is shale. If you notch up the pressure and temperature a little bit, you make a low grade rock called slate. If you increase pressure and temperature even more, the grade goes a little bit more up to make phyllite. If you increase pressure and temperature even more, you get schist, which is the intermediate grade. And if you increase the pressure and temperatures a lot, it makes gneiss, nice, which is a high-grade metamorphic rock. So high-grade and gneiss nice of the foliated metamorphic rocks, gneiss nice is of the highest grade. And there's one even higher than that. It's called migmatite. Schist is of intermediate grade. Slate is of the lowest grade. And phyllite is kind of in between low and intermediate grade. So how can you tell as a geologist what the metamorphic grade is? Well you use index minerals. Index minerals. If you want to find this diagram by the way um, just type in metamorphic grade on the Google images and you'll find it. Uh, a chlorite is only formed under relatively low pressures and temperatures where the temperatures will maybe only go up to 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, for example. And it's found, so it's, uh, if you find this, that's an indicator of low metamorphic grade. Selimanite is found with uh, only a much higher pressures and temperatures. We're talking 400 to 600 degrees Celsius. 
and 5 to 10 megapascals, very high pressures and temperatures. And so silimonite is a high-grade metamorphic rock. Garnet is found from medium to high grade. You can see muscovite is found from low to intermediate grade. These are the pressure. So these, um, if you increase the pressure and temperature more, you get higher grade, and you look for the higher grade metamorphic minerals. If you increase the pressures and temperatures low, you get the lower grade metamorphic minerals. Another way to look at it is through this diagram here. Oh, but I met one of you um, when you came to my house, uh, a young lady who uh, told me she had some kyanite. Um, kyanite, silimonite, and andalusite are index minerals found in metamorphic rocks. So that mineral that you were talking about that you found is of um, is formed when you increase pressure a lot in a, in, in, in a metamorphic rock. But temperature doesn't go up as much. Look here on the x-axis how you go from about 180 degrees Celsius up to 1,000 degrees Celsius and you go from zero, degree, uh, zero kilobars to 10 kilobars. So as you Here's your diagram here. This is called a phase diagram, and it shows you these three index minerals, kyanite, silimonite, and andalusite. As you go on the x-axis from left to right, temperature increases. And as you go on the y-axis, from uh, as you go up, pressure increases, right? So think about it. This diagram is really useful as, for a geologist because when you go deeper in the Earth, pressures and temperatures increase, don't they? Therefore, as you go this from here to here, from here to here, you're going deeper underground, aren't you? As you go from here to here, you're going deeper underground to higher pressures and temperatures. Another way of putting it is, as you go from here to here, grade increases. Metamorphic grade increases. So, um, if you find silimonite in a metamorphic rock, you're dealing with a high-grade metamorphic rock, aren't you? If you find kyanite in there, it's a lower-grade metamorphic rock. This is called a phase diagram. If you find andalusite in the rock, then press the pressures added to the parent rock were not that great. This is a phase diagram, and the way these are constructed is uh, you, you take a device called an autoclave, and you put um, minerals under high pressures and temperatures, and you see which ones are stable. For example, at 800 degrees Celsius and 4 kilobars, silimonite is stable. At 600 degrees Celsius and 2 kilobars, andalusite is stable. Under 400 degrees C and 4 kilobars, what's stable? Kyanite stable. And so they just uh, keep dialing up the pressure and temperature, and they open up the pressure, the pressure vessel inside of the autoclave, which is a device that you can increase in pressure, pressure and temperature on your sample, and you see which ones are stable. What do you think is going to be stable right on that line here at about 600 degrees Celsius and... 2.7 kilobars. Right on that line, andalusite and silimonite are stable. At 600 degrees Celsius and 6 kilobars on this line, what's going to be stable here? On that, Right on that line, kyanite and silimonite. How about right here? At 380 degrees Celsius and 2 kilobars, what index minerals are going to be stable here? Andalusite and kyanite. What about right here where these three lines meet? Which index minerals are going to be stable? All three. This is called, ladies and gentlemen, the triple point. Once you find the triple point through your autoclave experiments, you've hit the jackpot because then you can construct this phase diagram. So this shows you metamorphic index minerals.
let's try and read this diagram here from your uh, textbook. Uh, this shows you different metamorphic facies, F-A-C-I-E-S. What is a metamorphic facies? Well, here you see a bivariate diagram. Again, you have temperature increasing from left to right on your x-axis, and you have pressure increasing from as you go up on the y-axis. So down here, is this going to be of lower grade? Yes. And up here, it's going to be higher grade. Well, these, these colors you see here with the words in the middle, epidote, epidote blue schist, lawsonite blue schist, zeolite, green schist, amphibolite, granulite. These are, called, these are called metamorphic facies. And in each metamorphic facies, different index minerals are going to be found. Selimanite, for example, might be found up here. So when pressures and temperatures are really high, you get a high-grade metamorphic facies called epidote eclogite. Over here, under which which of these metamorphic facies on this diagram is of the lowest grade? I'll give you a five or six seconds. Take a look at that diagram. The zeolite facies is of the lowest grade. Highest grade would be epidote eclogite in this diagram. You can have all kinds of different metamorphic facies diagrams, but you need to be able to read them. As you go from left to right, temperature goes up, up to down to up, pressure goes up. So as you go from here, this way, grade increases. And these are your metamorphic facies. You need to know where the high-grade facies are and the low-grade facies are. And they're identified by index minerals. Here you can see Scotland. And these are all metamorphic rocks. And they're divided into uh, different zones based on what index minerals you find in them. With purple being selenite, a really high-grade metamorphic facies, and then chlorite be down here near England. Here's England down here. Uh, these are lower-grade facies. So when you, when you go to Scotland, you go to Scotland, the metamorphic grade increases as you move away from England up north. No, in England, there's, there's no metamorphic rocks, only in Scotland. Not funny. I'm sorry. So, what kinds of metamorphism do we have? Well, metamorphism in, involves an increase in pressure, an increase in temperature, and or the presence of chemical, chemically active fluids. One way you can uh, make metamorphic rocks is through burial metamorphism. If you bury rocks, so sedimentary rocks are deposited layer after layer after layer, the older layers are going to end up down here, right? And they're going to be buried, and they're, there's going to be pressure put on them from above. That's called burial metamorphism. Burial metamorphism primarily involves pressure. A little bit of temperature, because it does heat up as you go deeper in the earth, but mostly pressure. And so do you, let me ask you a question here. Um, let's test your knowledge. Do you think burial metamorphism can make foliation? Yes, because pressure is involved. Pressure can produce foliation, right? If pressure is involved, you can produce foliation. Next type of metamorphism is called contact metamorphism. And what's contact metamorphism? Uh, let me show you. So, contact metamorphism involves igneous plutons, dikes and sills and laccoliths. So if you have magma rising, like here's a dike, you might recall this is a dike, and it's feeding this volcano. Well, the rocks, as this magma rises, it's going to heat the, the rocks next to the igneous pluton. It's going to bake them. 
not hot enough to melt them, but enough to metamorphose them. This is called contact metamorphism. When ma magma underground comes into contact with other rocks, it heats them. So contact metamorphism only involves temperature, not pressure. Pressure is not that important. It's mostly temperature. So if, if uh, contact metamorphism involves temperature and not pressure, do you think you're going to make foliated metamorphic rocks? No, because you need big pressure changes to make foliation. So contact metamorphism only it does not involve the formation of foliation. It only forms non-foliated metamorphic rocks. And the surrounding rocks are heated up. So contact metamorphism is, uh, involves almost only temperature. And it's local. It's only around the igneous plutons, or around the magma bodies underground, where you form this metamorphism. Let me ask you another question here. Here's a magma body right here. So the rock here near the magma body is going to be heated more because it's right next to the magma body. As you go away from the magma body, the, the temperature increase is going to be less. So, do you think metamorphic grade would increase or decrease as you go away from the magma body? It would decrease, right? Because these rocks right next to the magma body are going to be heated to higher temperatures than those um, farther away from the igneous pluton. I don't know why who this guy is. Let me see. But I'm trying to show you what a, a metamorphic aureole is. <laughs> who this guy is, I have no idea. It's not the Baltimore Orioles if you're a baseball fan. It's spelled A U R E O L E S. God, it's slow. Okay. So, what Orioles are, are, okay, imagine, here's, a, here's a, what we call a, a geologic map. And here you can see an igneous rock body, and you're looking from above. So this, you're looking down from an airplane. And you see these, this igneous rock here. Here's a scale going from zero to three miles. So from here, walking from here to here is about three miles. Here's your igneous rock here. And then here you have um, a high-grade metamorphic rock zone around the igneous intrusion. And then you have a lower-grade zone. These, are, these zones are called orioles. So orioles are these... Um, zones where you find metamorphic rocks of different grade as you go away from the igneous pluton. This is one of the first things that you map in geology in your junior year of college if you're a uh, geology student. And Hornfells is a very common rock formed by contact metamorphism. The Hornfells is formed by contact metamorphism. So we've talked about two kinds of metamorphism so far. Burial metamorphism, contact metamorphism. Next one's the most important one called regional metamorphism. Now regional metamorphism, ladies and gentlemen, occurs at subduction zones. Regional met metamorphism is, as the name implies, it's regional. It can go for thousands of miles. We have regional metamorphism that's affected all of eastern California, for example. Regional metamorphism involves increases in pressure and temperature. So do you think that foliated metamorphic rocks would be formed at places of regional metamorphism? Yes, because pressure is involved. Once more, reg regional metamorphism occurs due to subduction 
and involves pressure and temperature. Let me show you real quick here. So we've talked about burial metamorphism, we've talked about contact metamorphism, and now we're talking about regional metamorphism. Regional metamorphism occurs at subduction zones, and it occurs for over a wide region. Contact metamorphism is very local. It's just located wherever magma came into contact with rocks. Here you've got a whole bunch of sedimentary rocks you can tell because they're layered. These rocks here right next to the dike have undergone contact metamorphism. And you can separate the contact metamorphism into orioles. They're low grade, farther away from the intrusion, the high grade right next to the intrusion. Regional is re, uh, okay, involves subduction. So subduction involves is regional metamorphism. Faults. What are faults? Well, faults are places in the earth where there's a crack in the ground. Okay, let me show you. We'll be talking a lot about faults when we get to earthquakes because the movement of faults makes earthquakes. Geologic faults. I'm sure you've heard something about uh, faults. So here you can see this is a fault in the earth. See, right here, the earth has moved. Look at this sedimentary layer here. It's the same as this one here. These arrows show you that this, on this side of the fault, the rocks have moved up, and this side they've moved down. Whenever there's movement along a fault, you make an earthquake. Here you can see a, no, a whole bunch of faults where this person is. Here's a fault right here, and a fault right here. This black rock here is maybe coal. It's the same as this black rock here. So this side moved up and this side moved down. Over here, you can see this bed here is the same as this bed here. So this bed here moved down with respect to this bed here. Somebody's knocking on my door. I'm going to have to stop here.